Hey everybody, my name is Jason Wheeler. Thanks a lot for being here. I'm a Bay Area mortgage broker, lender, and the reason I'm doing this quick video training, this uh, this lesson for you, is a couple of different reasons. What I've found in this industry over 10 years of doing business is that there are so many people out there that are just deathly afraid to talk to a banker, to talk to a broker, or to talk to anybody. Uh, financial matters all often make people nervous and they just don't know where to start. And what I wanted to do with this quick presentation is kind of show you um, first of all, I'm going to answer the five most common lending questions that people are afraid to ask. I'm going to go ahead and go through those with you. I'm also going to spend a little bit of time to tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit where I came from, so that you can kind of see um, you know, what I'm all about. And, and once you see what I'm all about, hopefully you'll want to go ahead and reach out and get your questions answered. That's my main intention today. So with that, I'm going to, let's just go ahead and dive right in. What I want you to do also is check me out on social networks. Follow me. I'm very active on those things. Uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. People love me on Yelp. If you look up um, Pleasant Hill Mortgage Brokers, I tend to rank at the very, very top on, on Yelp. My consumers love me. And uh, I'd really just appreciate their reviews more than anything. So definitely connect with me there go to jasonwheeler.biz forward slash follow and you can find me on all my social networks so with that let's just kind of go ahead and dive right in what I want to do is I really wanted to let you know a little bit about myself and the reason why I want to do that is just to show you that I'm a regular person um, a lot of people have misconce misconceptions about loan agents or, or bankers or brokers and they think that they're always in a suit and tie sitting behind a desk uh, stamping loan approvals like they are in the movies and that's just not the case so what I want to do is just kind of show you a little bit uh, about where I came from and, and what I'm all about I live and work in Pleasant Hill California it's a suburb outside of uh, outside of San Francisco, about 20 minutes. And most of my business is in the San Francisco Bay Area. I help people all over California get lending and get money for real estate. However, uh, my main business is focused around my main cities. I like to give back to the community. Uh, I'm a regular guy. I love coffee. I drink way too much coffee. I love dogs and pizza and burritos. I love to eat way too much. I used to love... Uh, wine and beer, but I kind of cut that out when I, I realized that I have a, a daughter on the way. So um, that's a little bit about what I'm going through right now. My background is in the service business. I have I have uh, years and years of experience. I used to wait tables and bartend. And, you know, that, that profession taught me a lot about how to deal with people and how to have fun with people. And, um, you know, I don't know if, you, if you've ever been in a business like that that's so fast-paced it is uh it's it was a great way for me to start out and to learn a little a lot about service and a lot about how to help people um you know be happy and have fun so that's that's what really what I pride myself on I try to bring a little bit of that to the banking industry as well I've been in real estate lending since 2003 and um you know it wasn't always real easy I didn't have a real fast start out I struggled a little bit when I first got started but I never quit and since then I've I've really been able to take off. I've been a consistent top producer for the last seven years or so. And I am cons I've am helped thousands of people, uh, countless people, maybe not quite thousands, so, but I've helped count countless people every single year with their real estate goals. I help them buy real estate. I help them refinance their homes. And I ultimately want to answer your questions. I don't ever quit. A, a lot of times people that are in real estate or that are in um, looking to buy real estate, they, they quit. They get discouraged. It's tough. It's not an easy business. It's not easy to get a loan all the time. I won't quit as long as you won't quit. That's my commitment to my clients is I'll absolutely do whatever it takes to get you the funding you need to reach your goals. So that's a little bit about me uh, personally, where I came from, what I do. Let's go ahead and dive right into some of the, the five most common lending questions that people are afraid to ask. Here's what they are. Here, from my personal experience when people talk to me, here's uh, some of the most common questions that people ask me right away. First of all, people are afraid to talk to a mortgage broker. How much do they charge? What can I expect? Uh, do I got to pay you to talk to you? Are, are you going to gouge me in fees? I will answer that question for you in a minute. How do I know how much house I could afford? Well, I'll de definitely show you exactly what you could do real quick ways to figure out how much you could afford uh, on your own. How much cash will I need to purchase a home? There's obviously different options, different scenarios of what you could do with different amounts of money. So I'll kind of show you the minimum that you could get started with and obviously um, the difference between you know putting the minimum down and putting a lot down. Uh, let's say broker or banker. There's a big difference between whether you go in and you talk to a mortgage banker, somebody that works for a bank, and when you work uh, with a mortgage broker or a loan consultant. What's the difference between those two and why is one better than the other? We'll definitely answer that question for you. Fast closings. People always want to close fast from the time that 
they get in contract to the time that they close. How quick can I close? Uh, I've done some amazingly fast closings and I do them consistently. I can't do them for every single deal because every deal is different, but I will show you some examples of some very, very fast closings that I've done. So that, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, this is kind of funny. I wanted to share this with you. Uh, this kind of reminds me a lot of what the consumer goes through. Uh, in this in this quick little cartoon, this lady, she, obviously a loan consultant, the bank approves your loan, right? The guy's obviously dead. So, uh, you know, getting a loan, I don't know if you've ever been through it or not, but getting a loan can be very stressful. It could be hard. It could be, you lose sleep sometimes. It's, it's not an easy thing to go through because especially if it's such a, if it's a project or something you're financing that you're really passionate about, like your first home, um, you know, the, the thought of the loan not going through could be very, very stressful. So it's not an easy business. It's not always easy to get a loan, but like I said, the main guarantee that I'll give you is that I will never quit and I will absolutely help you get to where you need to go. That's my main, my main commitment and guarantee to you guys. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the, the first most common question that I get asked is people are afraid to call somebody. People are afraid to talk to, pe to, to somebody about uh, a big financial decision like this. So what can you expect? First of all, when you talk to someone like myself, there's no cost to you. All my fees are always paid by the banks that I work with. So for instance, you're not going to pay me an upfront fee for a consult or, or a credit report or you know, anything like that. My fees are always paid by the lenders that I work with, which is definitely a great um, perk to you guys. So you could talk to someone like myself with for absolutely no cost. Most pre-approvals pre can be done within 10 to 15 minutes just over the phone. Uh, it could be as simple as a phone conversation, as long as you're honest with me and uh, we have an open conversation. I could get you from, you know, having no idea where you can where you need to start to knowing exactly what your buying power could be within 10 to 15 minutes just over the phone. Uh, closing costs, people are always wanting to know, you know, what do I add up pay paying closing costs? And you could actually structure different lender, uh, different loans so that your closing costs are 100% paid for by the lender. If you have extra money laying around, most people don't, then you could pay for your own closing costs. There's trade-offs, there's benefits uh, to each scenario, and we could go ahead and go into that in greater detail later on. Um, so when you're buying a house, what are the closing costs going to be? Well, rather than breaking them, it's different for every single purchase, obviously. But as a rule of thumb, I like to tell people in general, on the low end, you're going to pay about, or, you know, the closing costs are going to be about 1.5 to 2% of what your purchase price is. So whatever your pur purchase price is, if you're looking at 500,000 times that by 1.5 to 2%, 2% uh, being a really high end, 1.5% being average, um, the lowest you'd probably pay would probably be around 1%. And we could go ahead and get in, get into, um, if you wanted to speak with me personally, I could show you exactly what those costs break down to, who they go to, and why you need to pay them. So question number two, how much loan can I afford? How much house can I afford? And how do I make that calculation? Well, what you want to do is you want to calculate your debt to income ratio, okay? And what that debt to income ratio is, is your monthly outgoing debts divided by your monthly gross income. Now it's income before taxes. So you want to take out uh, whatever you pay to the government or whatever your, your job takes out of your paycheck. It's, it's on a gross monthly income. So usually that figure is larger than what you're actually getting paid for qualification purposes, which most people find kind of cool. So what you want to do is you want to find out what your primary housing expenses, whatever you spend in rent or whatever your new mortgage is going to be, and you want to add all other payments. Now all other payments are going to be things that are appearing on your credit report. Um, so all their payments would be things like credit cards, student loans, car loans, any other loans that you have outstanding on your credit report, revolving debt, um, and they go by the minimum monthly payments. So let's say you owe 10 grand on a on a credit card, but your minimum payment's only 100 bucks a month. They're gonna use the minimum payment for qualification purposes uh, in this case. What you don't count is regular monthly bills like uh, cable, internet. Um, PG&E, uh, electricity, all these things that don't show up on your credit report, they're not going to be counted into your debt to income ratio. What you want to do is you want your debt to income ratios to be under 40%, okay? So as you can see, this person, their total liabilities and their total divided by their total income, it comes out to 40%. So that's the... You, you could get a loan if you're just over 44%. When By the time you're over 45%, it gets pretty tough to get you a loan. So what you want to do is you want to be between 35 and 40% ideally. Uh, max amount would be 45% debt to income ratio. Anybody could really make that calculation. Uh, if you want, I could help you with it anytime you want. You could just go ahead and ask me about it anytime and I could go ahead and help you uh, calculate your debt to income ratios. So 
Next part, moving on, how much cash will I need to purchase a home? So this is something that, that most people are just, you know, it's obviously it's a big question. It's, it's a, could be a lot of money. It could be a little bit. But in today's market, you could get a loan and buy a house with as little as 3.5% down on a home. So, you know, let's take a look at um, a $500,000 purchase times 3.5%. <clears throat> you're looking at $17,500, okay? Uh, I'm in the Bay Area, so housing prices are, are a little higher than most areas. But, you know, that's, it's not chump change, obviously, but it's it's doable. You could take a loan from your 401k. You could get a, a gift from a family member. There's a lot of different things that you could do to come up with 3.5%. Uh, now, down payment assistance is available for some borrowers. Not everybody could get it because it's usually based on household income. But there are programs here in California that could help people, if you're having a, a real hard time finding money for a down payment, we could come up with down payment assistance for you. Ask me about that personally if you uh, if you want to go ahead and take a look at those different options. Now here's another example. For a $300,000 purchase, 3.5% um, is only 10500 So it's definitely something that's doable. Uh, obviously you get a better, better terms on a loan the more that you put down. And also it, credit comes into play and all those little things come into play too. If you're having credit issues or if you have a short sale or something like that, I could definitely show you the steps that you need to take in order to go ahead and get your credit scores up and to go ahead and get qualified. That's obviously a whole different presentation, but I could definitely teach you you. If you're having credit issues or problems with uh, past financial problems, I could definitely point you in the right direction and show you exactly what you need to do to go ahead and surpass that so that you could go ahead and get a mortgage loan um, sooner than later. So with that, let's go ahead and um, next question, broker, banker, what's the difference? Here's a big one is, um, you know, a lot of times people want to go into their friendly neighborhood bank, the big, I call them the big five. So when I talk about bankers, I'm talking about Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, Citibank. Uh, these are the big, big banks that obviously are very well known all across the country. Um, so first of all, I like, you're, you're going to be stuck in a banker box if you go work with a banker. Uh, there's a couple things that I, I don't really advocate about banks, or they could be good companies. I don't. My personal experience with them is that you're going to be stuck in a banker box. So when you go into your bank, you're going to have to fit their mold. Okay. The benefit of working with someone like myself is I could fit you in a bunch of different molds. Um, banks typically have really high overhead. They got large office buildings. They got a lot of employees. Those costs often get pay passed over to their borrowers in the form of interest rates and higher yields to the borrower. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the less overhead a business has, the le they could pass those savings on to, to their customers. Uh, limited ongoing education, federal requirements. Here's the thing that I think is crazy is that bank employees, you know, they really don't have your best interests at heart. Bank employees are really just they, they work for the bank. The bank pays them their, their check. They don't have you as the client their best interest at heart because they're worried about losing their job. They do what's in the best interest of the bank. Not only that, but the, what's crazy to me is that on the federal level, um, the education and, and requirements that, that bank employees have to go through are nowhere near what someone like myself has to go through. Okay, we, have, we get tested on a regular basis. So the benefits of working someone like myself, like a mortgage broker, um, is I have direct access to over 50 different lenders that compete for my business. They know I'm a top producer, and every day I have bank executives emailing me, telling me about their new programs and rates, and I get to pass that on to my, to my clients. I get to pass that savings on. Uh, people are competing, and I could always shop 50 different lenders and bring any given client to the best bank that fits them any given day. Wholesale pricing, I just talked about this. So I, I'm a small shop. you know. I don't have a big, big um, office building or anything like that. I work directly one-on-one -on -one with my clients. Sometimes I do house calls. Uh, I work a lot with the, the way technology is over the internet and on the phone. So I could offer uh, wholesale pricing. Low overhead equals oftentimes, almost all the time, better rates for my clients. And if you want to go ahead and put me to the test on that, just go ahead and, and, and compare me and I'd be happy to go ahead and show you how I stack up against my big bank competition. I almost always beat them. Constant education required by federal compliance. Every single year we are tested and we are re-educated. Every single year we are um, we're held to a different standard than the banks. We have to go ahead and go through all kinds of education every year. We have to have licenses. I have a, I have a uh, mortgage license through the state of California. I have a mortgage license through the federal, um, the federal mortgage license. I also have my real estate license and I've been practicing real estate for over 10 years. So the education requirements are just way, way higher than what would be required from a bank employee. 
the company that I work with right now, we're top 50 in, produ in production nationwide in the Scotsman Guide, and that's until 2012. The 2013 numbers haven't come out yet from the time that I've recorded this, but we're constant. My company is a constant top production nationwide, not including myself. I am. Um, we're also top rated with a, with the Better Business Bureau. You can check us out anytime on the BBB. We are top rated, which is um, few and far between for mortgage companies, I think, these days. So those are definitely the, the, the difference between working with someone like myself and working with going into a big bank, okay? So I hope that clears some of that up for you. Uh, personally, I've been a top producing consultant since 2003, okay? So every year, uh, I've been doing better and better and better. I've been doing some amazing things for my clients in my local market. And uh, some of the reviews and some of the testimonials that I've collected over the years uh, prove that. So so it, it, I challenge you to go ahead and put me to the test on that. If you, what I tell you is to trust your gut. You know, if, if you have questions, go ahead and give me a shot. And uh, what I say is, is if, if you're comfortable, then that's what you want to do. Is you want to work with somebody that you're comfortable with. So moving on from that, let's talk about closing fast. Okay, I need a loan to close fast. I do some of the fastest closings here in the Bay Area that I know of. Now this one in particular, this one example here, uh, it was submitted on. Um, on August 20th, and it was cleared for closing on, on the 6th of the very next month. So that's a 13-day closing, which is very, very, very fast in the industry. Um, I don't have a slide of this one, but just recently from when I'm recording this, uh, just about two weeks ago, I had a, a personal client who was having a real hard time getting a loan because of some personal financial challenges. I was able to go ahead and put them in connection with one of my private portfolio lenders, I got them a very competitive interest rate and we went ahead and closed their loan in six business days. And that's no joke. I can show you proof of that. If you want to go ahead and um, test me on that, you could go ahead and get in touch with me and I will show you proof that we go ahead, went ahead and closed that deal in six days. Now I can't do that for every single, every single loan, but I do do consistent closings within 17 days of submission. Uh, pretty standard escrow time is when you're purchasing real estate is usually around 30 days. I constantly do 21 days, 17 days. Uh, if it's a real time crunch, you know, I could do 10 days. The best that I've probably ever done is most recently I did a six day closing. So the reason why I'm able to do that is I have direct access and communication with bank executives and decision makers. I don't have to screw around and, um, and wait, but I have direct email access, phone access, cell phones of bank execs. Uh, I get to get, go directly to decision makers when it comes to these big decisions financially. And I have relationships with them, so I'm able to go ahead and sometimes get things done that a lot of other banks are not able to do, as well as other banks or lenders. So what I want you to do, what we just did, is we went through the five most common lending questions that I get asked on a regular basis. So... Uh, I went ahead and I told you a little bit about me, where I came from, what I'm all about, and I went ahead and went through the five most common lending questions that I get asked on a regular basis. Now, here's what I want you to do. Uh, if you have questions, I want you to get your questions answered. If it's not with me, fine, but get a referral from a family friend, get a referral from a realtor that you know, somebody that you know, that's often the best way to go ahead and... Um, and get your questions answered. Uh, ideally, I would love you to connect with me. And you could do that by picking up the phone, give me a call personally, email me, uh, go to my website and check out a lot of the uh, different articles that I've written over the years. I have one of the top mortgage blogs in the Bay Area and uh, Google ranks it so. Uh, also, go ahead and you know check me out on Facebook. Go to my social networks, and if you want to go ahead and connect with me, see what I'm all about in real life, um, get my notifications, and send me a message there. I'll connect with you in real time, and I, I'm all about that type of networking. So in closing, what I wanted to do is just real quick show you, um, go to my blog, and check me out, do, do further research on me if you want to. You could go to Google and check out, um, uh, I'm in Pleasant Hill, Pleasant Hill Mortgage Brokers. Uh, go to Google and search for people in your area, find them. As you can see, I'm ranked number one or on the very top of Yelp. These are all advertisements. People spend a lot of money to be at the top here. But as you can see, I'm ranked by my clients. Um, on the top of the internet for my local market space. Um, and also here in uh, Walnut, Walnut Creek Jumbo Loans. Um, you know, I'm also ranked really, really high for the jumbo loan market here in Walnut Creek, Lafayette, Pleasant Hill, Martinez area. Check me out yourself. Do some of your own due diligence. What I want you to do is, is check it out and then give me a call. And like I said, if I'm not your guy, 
that's great. If I'm not your guy, that's fine. But what I want you to do is I do want you to get your questions answered and uh, jump into it. The reason is because home ownership is American dream. Home ownership is the way to a lot of different wealth. I mean, equity builds uh, every single wealthy person I know did it in some form with real estate. So if you have any of those big dreams, you definitely want to um, take those first steps. And oftentimes those first steps is finding out what you could do financially uh, to go ahead and get qualified. So again, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope this lesson has been informative for you. I hope that you've been able to uh, to get a little bit of a few gold nuggets out of this, and maybe get some of your questions answered. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'm going to let you go. Make it a great day. And uh, I'll see you personally on my blog or on Facebook or give me a call.